If you're ready to buy a Royal Caribbean drink package in 2024, before you hit that book now button, you're gonna to wanna to know a few important things about how Royal Caribbean's drink packages work and how to save the most money because no one wants to overpay for it. We've got all the tips you need in this video. Hello everybody, it's Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com and by far, Royal Caribbean's drink packages are likely the most popular thing you can add on to your cruise. As you're probably aware, Royal Caribbean does not include all the drinks in your cruise vacation. You get some, like water and coffee and tea, but in a lot of cases, you're gonna want soft drinks or beers or cocktails, and that's where a Royal Caribbean drink package comes in. But it can be a little confusing as to how these drink packages work and do you actually need one? And most importantly, if you do need one, how do you save money on it? So Royal Caribbean has three drink packages to consider. Each of these drink packages have a fixed daily cost offered to on all ships so that you can budget your beverage costs and potentially save some money. The various plans provide guests with unlimited drinks that can be used at any bar or restaurant on Royal Caribbean's cruise ships, as well as their private destinations. The drink package benefits are available via your C-Pass card, which any waiter or bartender can verify that you have the package. Among the three drink packages, none of them include mini bar items, Evian water, souvenir glassware, especially beers or super premium category beverages. Let's go through each one, starting with the refreshment package. This drink package includes all the non-alcoholic drinks. It's popular with adults as well as older kids, and those are just like having juices, coffees, and teas included. For every guest that buys the refreshment package, it includes premium coffees and teas, bottled still and sparkling water, fresh squeezed orange juice, mocktails, fountain sodas and Coca-Cola freestyle beverages, and of course you get a Coca-Cola souvenir cup included. Then we have the classic soda package, which a lot of people just call the soda card. It's the unlimited soda offering, and it's very popular with kids. This includes fountain soda and refills in any venue, Coca-Cola freestyle beverages, and the Coca-Cola souvenir cup as well. And then there is the deluxe beverage package, which is the unified unlimited alcohol package. This is the best of both worlds, with access to nearly the entire stock of beverages with or without liquor. You can enjoy unlimited combinations, pretty much, of everything from cocktails with top shelf spirits to premium teas and everything in between. So it includes cocktails, spirits, liquors, beer, wine by the glass, mocktails, premium coffees and teas, fountain sodas, the Coca-Cola freestyle beverages, Coca-Cola souvenir cup, bottled still and sparkling water, and fresh squeezed juices. It also includes a 40% discount on wines under $100, and a 20% discount on wines above $100. The deluxe beverage package includes drinks with liquor up to $15 in value. Drinks that are served in a souvenir cup, glass, mug, or whatever are not included with this drink package, but a portion of the drink price is subsidized by the beverage package. It's really important to know that if one adult in the cabin elects to buy the deluxe beverage package, all the other adults in the same cabin need to book it. This rule does not apply to the refreshing package or the soda package. Now, if this rule applies to you and one of the other adults in the cabin doesn't want the unlimited alcohol package, well, then you could call Royal Caribbean and ask to get them one of the lower packages, which will save you money compared to being forced to buy the deluxe beverage package. The price of a drink package will vary from ship to ship and sailing to sailing. Royal Caribbean utilizes dynamic pricing for its drink packages, primarily the deluxe beverage package, but this really means that the price could be different based on the ship, itinerary, or sale date that you pick. The deluxe beverage package price ranges between $55 and $105 per person per day. The Royal Refreshment package is pretty much $29 per person per day. Soda package, $12.99 per person per day. And every drink package includes gratuities when you purchase it. So there's no additional tips or costs for anything included in the package. When you purchase it, you'll see a service charge that comes with the drink package, which includes the automatic 18% gratuity. And no, this gratuity is not the same gratuity that you may have already prepaid with your cruise fare. That gratuity is for your stateroom attendants and the dining room staff. The key is with any drink package, you always wanna buy it before the cruise. And that is because Royal Caribbean offers sales almost always on its drink packages. Bottom line, it will cost you more to buy the drink package on board your cruise ship than at home. So no matter what, it's always cheaper to buy it before the cruise. Plus, the nice benefit of Royal Caribbean system is if you buy it today, one of these drink packages, and then tomorrow or next week or next month or next year, the price goes down on the drink package, 
you can always cancel and rebook with no penalty the drink package instantly via Royal Caribbean's website and then rebook at the lower price. And this is a really good idea to book it now because sometimes the price goes up. So by booking it now, you get to lock in the current price, but still be able to take advantage of a price decrease later on. Something else you should know about Royal Caribbean's drink packages is there's no daily limit for any of the drink packages. I know that Carnival and maybe some other cruise lines have a daily limit, Royal Caribbean does not. So what are the pros and cons of a drink package? Well, one of the pros is you're gonna be able to potentially save a lot more money compared to paying for each drink a la carte. Certainly, if you're somebody that enjoys having many drinks every day, it can definitely save you money with a drink package. This requires anyone that buys the package to be willing and able to enjoy a good half dozen drinks every day of their cruise. There is no question a drink package has an excellent value proposition associated with it, but you need to be able to drink enough to quote unquote, break even on the package versus buying the same amount of drinks on your own. If you knew that you were not gonna drink enough every day of your cruise to break even, I'm not sure why you'd wanna pay for a package. With that being said, the price of a Royal Caribbean drink a la carte has really been going up over the last couple of years. You can expect to pay anywhere between 10 and $15 for a cocktail on a Royal Caribbean cruise ship, which means bar tabs can quickly get very expensive. And with so many tantalizing choices at each bar on your cruise ship, the temptation to grab a drink is always present. The drink package benefits will save the most money for anybody that drinks a lot during the day and then spreads their drinking out throughout the course of their day and evening. Then of course, there's the amount of drinks. One common regret I hear about all the time is something called drink fatigue with the drink package. And this refers to when somebody buys the drink package and they end up drinking way more than they ordinarily would and they end up ordering drinks for the sake of ordering drinks. When using a drink package, I always struggle with the question, am I really ordering a drink because I want one or because I have a drink package? There've been plenty of times with a drink package where I know I'm simply ordering a drink because I have the package and the show, activity, or event I'm attending offers drinks, so why not get one? If you're on a short cruise and are looking to have a great time, the drink package should make a lot more sense since there are less days to use the package benefits. Likewise, shorter cruises have a tendency to have more of a party atmosphere than longer cruises. So it's important to keep in mind what your goal is when ordering a drink package. Are you gonna be spending much of your time by the pool? Or are you somebody that will be doing other activities where drinking may not always be an option? Then there's the convenience, and I would argue this is just as important as how many drinks per day you're gonna have because many other passengers swear that the convenience factor of the drink package is totally worth it. It makes enjoying drinks simple with no fuss involved. There's no worrying about how much the drink costs and if you should get it or something cheaper. Heck, there's not even the concern about if you can afford to get a drink or not. It's a fair point. And amongst the most commonly cited reasons people love drink packages. We all love the convenience of the drink package too, especially to have the freedom of trying new drinks without fear of ordering something we don't like and then being quote unquote stuck with it or relegating ourselves to drinking the same old drinks because we know them all too well. The thing is, the number one reason to buy a drink package is to save money, I think. Otherwise, why would it exist, right? Royal Caribbean would not roll out something that would offer no savings and expect people to pay for it, I think. <laughs> With that in mind, the convenience is certainly important, but ultimately, I think the cost savings should still supersede that decision. Another really good reason to get a drink package is, of course, budgeting, because this is probably the most contentious point in my list. In addition to being convenient, a lot of its fans advocate that having an unlimited drink package helps them stay on budget and avoid thinking about money on a vacation. Now on the surface, this makes a lot of sense because you can buy a drink package before your cruise and break up the total cost of your sailing or opt to purchase it on board and cap your drink spending on there. In either case, it goes to making your total cost more predictable. It reminds me of old cell phone plans and why some people prefer unlimited data rather than fixed data plans. Simpler to have one cost that covers everything than having to worry about going over. I have to admit, I really like the idea of paying for the drink package months before your cruise and then paying it off on that billing cycle and then not having a giant bill at the end of the cruise. Now, it does not mean you'll actually save any money. You still need to drink enough every day of your cruise to actually make the drink package worthwhile. Otherwise, you're just overpaid earlier than usual. The whole notion of not having to worry about receipts, gratuity, or how much a drink costs is certainly nice, but it's far from essential. If someone told me I could save more money by doing some simple math every day, you bet I'll be bringing my calculator on board. There are a lot of fun things to do on a Royal Caribbean cruise, and the more money I can save, the more fun I can afford to have. Then, of course, there's a downside of the drink package, and that is sticker shock. Even if you're not on a tight budget, 
drink prices on Royal Caribbean can be somewhat shocking. There might be the most amazing drink on the menu, but spending $15 for it might not be in your wheelhouse. It's debatable how much any drink should cost, but if you go to a concert or a theme park, you're gonna find Royal Caribbean's prices very pedestrian. And of course, paying for your drink package, you'll be paying for the entire purchase up front, and that is not cheap. It's not uncommon to have well over $1,000 for two people to get the drink package on a Royal Caribbean cruise for a seven night sailing. That's a lot of money up front to pay for really almost anything. And lastly, you should also think about your itinerary. How many sea days or port days will you have will really factor into your decision. Will you be going on a cruise that visits Perfect Day, Cuckoo Key, or Labadee? In that case, those are port days, but your drinks are included. But if you're doing a lot of other ports elsewhere, maybe you're doing a European cruise or an Alaska cruise that is very port intensive, that means less time to get your money's worth out of your drink package. To get the best possible deal on a drink package, you really wanna buy it as early as you can and then reprice when there are price drops. The price of a drink package can change many times before the cruise begins, and this is because of the various sales offered. Typically, there's a pre-cruise sale all the time, and the drink package cost can vary considerably. The one thing you don't wanna do with the drink package is try to time a sale. Whether it's Black Friday, July 4th, or New Year's Eve, don't try to wait for a sale to book it. If you know you want a drink package or probably know you want one, book it now, lock in the price. If there is a better deal on one of these holidays, you can always cancel and rebook at the lower price. The problem is too many people wait to try to book their drink package on those sales because they don't want to lay out the money ahead of time and they end up paying more than they expected. Overall, whether a Royal Caribbean beverage package is right for you is totally a personal decision based on a lot of variables. There is no flat yes or no answer to determining if the drink package makes sense for everybody, but I hope the considerations in this video can help with your decision. Before purchasing any drink package, be sure to do your homework and do the math of how much you have to drink every day for it to make sense. If you're a first time cruiser, the drink package can make sense for some people and others, no sense at all. It's foolish to assume that any drink package is a good or bad value without considering how you cruise. The deluxe beverage package benefits guests who wanna have a great variety of premium drinks on their sailing. Those that mainly drink beers will find it more difficult to make the drink package worthwhile over the course of the cruise in terms of breaking even, so to speak. What I often hear from other people is that over the course of longer sailing, seven nights or longer, it becomes more and more difficult to maintain the level of drinking required to get the value from the package. Keep in mind that you can always purchase the drink package even after your cruise begins if you find yourself drinking more than you thought. Royal Caribbean advertises that its drink package can be purchased at any point in the cruise, provided there are at least four days left in the sailing. So the key is to know how you like to cruise and which pros and cons of the drink package are most important to you. At worst, you're gonna overpay for a drink package or for drinks on your own. In either case, you'll still likely have a great vacation experience. Let me know in the comments below, is a Royal Caribbean drink package something that you'll buy on your 2024 cruise? Let me know down there in the comments below. While you're below our video, hit the like button, subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications. That way, YouTube lets you know we have a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. We'll talk again real soon.